Hello grade 11s and welcome to today's lesson about the types of intermolecular forces between covalent molecules. For covalent molecules, the type of intermolecular forces that exist between the molecules depends largely on whether the molecules are polar or nonpolar. The first category of intermolecular forces that we will study is called van der Waals forces. These were named after the Dutch scientist Johannes van der Waals in around the late 1800s. Van der Waals forces are weak, short-range attractive forces between uncharged molecules. They arise from the interaction of permanent or induced dipoles. This means that van der Waals forces exist between uncharged, covalently bonded molecules. They do not occur in ionic compounds at all. There are three types of van der Waals forces, namely London forces, dipole-induced dipole forces, and dipole-dipole forces. Let us investigate each of these types of van der Waals forces individually, starting with London forces. London forces are named after the Dutch scientist Fritz London, who investigated their effects in the early 1900s. London forces are sometimes referred to as induced dipole-induced dipole forces. Although they exist between molecules that are essentially nonpolar, these molecules have the ability to form induced dipoles. To induce something means to influence an atom to do something that it otherwise may not normally be inclined to do. Under normal circumstances, an atom, such as helium shown in this diagram, is nonpolar as there is no unequal distribution of charge within the atom. However, at a single instant in time, the electrons may be positioned more to one side of the atom than to the other. This results in an induced dipole being formed. A dipole means two opposite charges closely spaced to one another. In this case, the left side of the atom is negatively charged and the right side of the atom is positively charged. The term dipole literally means two poles, a positive and a negative pole. An induced dipole only exists for as long as the electrons are in that position. If that induced dipole comes close to another similar induced dipole, these two atoms experience a force of attraction between them. Since electrons move all the time, these dipoles are only temporary and do not exist when the electrons are evenly distributed. When there is no longer a dipole, there is no force of attraction between the atoms. London forces are very weak and very short-range attractive forces that exist between induced dipoles. London forces occur between all nonpolar atoms and molecules, such as helium, neon, carbon dioxide, and hydrogen. The next type of van der Waals force is called dipole-induced dipole forces. Dipole-induced dipole forces are weak attractive forces that result when a polar molecule induces a dipole in a nonpolar atom or molecule by disturbing the arrangement of electrons in the nonpolar molecule. Here we have a nonpolar atom. Now let us see what happens when this nonpolar atom approaches a polar molecule. As the dipole approaches the neutral atom, it causes a shift in the position of the electrons within the neutral atom. In this example, the negative pole of the dipole repels the electrons in the neutral atom. It pushes the electrons in the neutral atom away. This results in an induced dipole with the negative charges on the left and the positive charges on the right. The polar molecule induces a dipole on the nonpolar atom, and as a result, a weak dipole induced dipole attractive force exists between them. If the induced dipole reverts back to being a neutral atom, the force of attraction will no longer be there. The force of attraction only exists for as long as the induced dipole remains as it is. Dipole-induced dipole forces are slightly stronger than London forces. One of the molecules is naturally polar and the intermolecular forces involved with polar molecules are stronger than those involved with nonpolar molecules. 
The third type of van der Waals force is called a dipole-dipole force. In a hydrogen chloride molecule, a positive and negative pole is formed in the molecule because of the electronegativity difference between the two atoms. We say that a permanent dipole is formed. A permanent dipole arises due to the shift in the position of the bonding pair of electrons because of differences in electronegativity between the atoms in the molecule. The chlorine atom has an electronegativity of 3, whilst the hydrogen atom has an electronegativity of 2.1. So the bonding pair of electrons is found closer to the chlorine atom than the hydrogen atom. Dipole-dipole forces are the intermolecular forces between polar covalent molecules, that is, molecules with permanent dipoles. The opposite poles of two different molecules are attracted to one another. These forces between molecules are dipole-dipole forces. To recap what we have learned so far, van der Waals forces exist between covalently bonded molecules. There are three types of van der Waals forces. London forces, these exist between nonpolar molecules. Dipole-induced dipole forces, these exist between polar and nonpolar molecules. Dipole-dipole forces. These exist between polar molecules. Let us now have a look at a few examples. In each case, we will try to identify the intermolecular forces that exist between the molecules. Number one, what type of intermolecular forces exist between the molecules of carbon dioxide? Firstly, let us confirm the bonding that occurs within the carbon dioxide molecule. All the atoms in the molecule are nonmetals, so this molecule is covalently bonded. Therefore, there will be van der Waals forces between the molecules. Next, we determine whether this molecule is polar or nonpolar from its molecular shape. This will help us decide which type of van der Waals forces exist between the molecules. The lowest notation for the carbon dioxide molecule looks like this. This molecule has a linear shape and both ends of the molecule are the same. It is therefore nonpolar. Therefore, the intermolecular forces will be van der Waals forces, London forces. Number two, what type of intermolecular forces exist between the molecules of hydrogen bromide? Again, confirm the bonding that occurs within the hydrogen bromide molecule. All the atoms in the molecule are nonmetals. So this molecule is covalently bonded. Therefore, there will be van der Waals forces between the molecules. To determine which type of van der Waals forces exist between the molecules, we need to decide if the molecule is polar or nonpolar from its molecular shape. The lowest notation for the hydrogen bromide molecule looks like this. This molecule has a linear shape, but the unequal distribution of the shared electron pair as a result of the difference in electronegativities between the two atoms means that this molecule is polar. Because the molecules are polar, we can conclude that the intermolecular forces are van der Waals, dipole-dipole forces. Number three. What intermolecular forces exist between the molecules in a mixture of nitrogen and sulfur dioxide? All the atoms in both molecules are nonmetals, so both molecules are covalently bonded. This is the Lewis notation for nitrogen. Nitrogen, therefore, has a linear shape. Because of the linear shape, the nitrogen molecule is nonpolar and could form an induced dipole. This is the lowest notation for sulfur dioxide. Because of the presence of the lone pair on the sulfur atom, this molecule has a bent shape. Because of the bent shape, the sulfur dioxide molecule is polar and has a permanent dipole. Therefore, the van der Waals forces between these two molecules are dipole-induced dipole forces. That is all for today, grade 11s. Join me in the next lesson when we learn about another type of intermolecular force. Until then, try the task video and see other lessons on the Mindset website. Goodbye.